healthcare. No. What's up, everybody? It's the big guy. You know, my eyes probably look, I don't know. They feel, feel strange, you know. Also, I uh, just lost my mom, so, you know, how that be. But, uh, today, you know, there's a couple things I want to discuss and want to talk about. I know I said earlier in the week uh, about, what did I say? I got so many things going on right now. Basically, uh, what I want to talk about is, uh, one, well, I saw it today. To me, it feels like it's, you know, it's a discussion uh, about the N word in our songs and when the other race sings it. Does it bother you? Bother people? Um, also, the there's a lot of women twerking, you know. Whatever dancing and that everybody always naked or no, not naked, but showing more skin, as I can say. Uh, I want to talk about that. Um, also, the violence in the world, the violence in the world, you know, in your community or whatever, what's going on. Who is it mostly caused by? What if we had a a different gender, a different uh, gender that was making policies and different things, you know, versus what I'm saying versus a man, we had more women in power. How, what would that be like? Um, and what was the other topic I wanted to discuss? I, I don't forget. Maybe it'll come back to me why we're going through going through this here. So let's get to it. What's up, people? It's the big guy. Welcome to Culturally Dysfunctional. Let me start off by saying these are my opinion and views of what I see and interpret as dysfunctional. Nothing but what I grew up seeing and understanding what all this means. I had to grow up and educate myself on life and learn a different difference between right and wrong. Morals are way different than what I'm used to. A new generation of disrespect, violence, and morals. My community is the opposite of what I was hoping to see as I get older. Martin Luther King gave a speech, I have a dream, but then later said that dream had turned into a nightmare. So in my episodes of Culturally Dysfunctional, I will be talking about the nightmare that the new generation is making for the older generation. Some may agree, some may disagree. It's all about who is looking with open eyes and mind. With that being said, let's jump into it. Okay. First topic. It come about, I tried to find the video again so I can let you see what I'm talking about, but you you might have seen it, but here it is. In our culture, we have music, rap music, that basically, basically says the N-word all the time throughout the song. And we have plenty of songs like that. So do it bother people or affect certain people that another race use the N-word because they're singing along with the, the song? Do they have to mute themselves when they get to that word? Or should it or should not be an issue? Here, I'm, here is where I'm at on that. To me, should not be an issue. It should not be an issue. It's a song. It's in the song. It's the words. Why should anybody have to mute themselves singing along with a song? It's it's two different. Like the guy said, I wish I can play it back for y'all. I'm 
I'll probably come up with it and let you hear what I'm talking about. And he said it perfectly. Because he was singing along with a song and people on the TikTok were worried about whether he said it or not. And to me, I don't care if he said it because he wasn't saying it in no negative way. He was singing along with the song. So why do it affect some black people? Why do it affect the culture? Some of them. You know, certain things such as a white woman with braids. Why? What does it matter? Who cares? But we have some people in society that nick picks and find some reason to be mad about it. Uh, everything has to be a problem. So I know this might be a controversial uh, topic, but It shouldn't be. Because another race sings along with the song or raps or have braids or whatever they do. What does it matter? We do the same thing. We have black women with blonde hair. If we even have hair that's blonde. Uh changing the eye colors, the blue, certain things like that, you know. What is what is the problem? Why it have to be a problem? We got to we got to to get past certain things, especially things that don't matter. Things that don't matter. And those are some things that don't matter. Saying the N word in a song when every culture likes the music or dance along with the music, sings the music. Should no one have to mute that mute themselves because of what we put in the music or what y'all put in the music? Because I don't rap me anything. To me, it's not a problem. So, text away. Leave it in the comments if you're watching it on YouTube. If you're watching this video on YouTube. But the next issue. What are the, what is the agenda of the women that, I mean, you're around, you just have shorts and your cheeks out. I mean, I watch it and, you know, it don't, I'm just, uh, I just be curious about what is the, the reason behind it. What are you, you looking for? Is it just for to get the likes and the views up? I mean, cause that's, that's all you see now. And, and I asked that question because I think I watched a documentary, documentary with, uh, man, what's her name? Uh, the woman from uh, Baywatch that had this situation uh, happen to her years ago um, where a video of her, her and her husband, a boyfriend at the time, got leaked out. And here was the issue with her. What happened to her is that, you know, she was part of the Playboy Mansion and, you know, she had her own thing going on at, at one time. She got... She played on Baywatch. But after she she has been married and had a child. So now the child is in school now. And uh now he had to hear it from other kids about his mother being on TV naked, a body showing. So he he was teased by that, and she felt bad about that. Do women nowadays think about that? Do you think about your child as they they get older, and cause what's on the internet a lot of times it stays on the internet. 
now your child is up in age, is in high school, and other students, his friends, professors, teachers, you know, they see his mom on the internet shaking her booty. She's shaking her booty. She's twerking, showing, revealing everything. Some women, some women having sex and different things like that. What kind of torment is that to the child? Or do you even do you even care or even think about it? Probably don't even care or even think about it. But I was just curious about that. Is it worth it? I mean, I'm a man, I'm going to look, you know, I mean, it's beautiful to watch, but at the same time, I wonder, is it as hard for a man would, to take a woman serious in a serious relationship that's been out there like that? Could I do it? I don't know. A lot of other men, men, can they do it? I don't know, but the big, the bigger picture is that child, that child. What will his life be like or her life? So, uh, you know, I, I, I like to know really what is the end game to that lifestyle that you have to exploit yourself. Is it that you're trying to find or get attention from, I don't know, you're getting attention from all types of men and from all walks of life, but who is the one that you're seeking? What What is it? Some of you say you you don't want a man or need a man, but the body exposure on the internet. What is that attention for then? What is it for? Who is it for? Is it for the man? Or is it for the likes or to try to get you a, a social media check? Really, what is the you know, what are you what are you seeking? What is the end game? I know some people, you know, yeah, a lot of people can get on OnlyFans and made enough money to buy a house and more things. But is you know, is that the end goal? All the the sex talk and the, and everything that goes on social media, and then you have children that's watching you, and then it end up being being your child one day to see you on social media giving oral sex or doing something like that, you know. What would how would that child be able to deal with it? Then after you see that your child have seen that, how would you be able to deal with that? Would it affect you? Would it affect you? Would it bother you? Man, you know, it, it get, you know, it get deeper after you, you know, you decide to change your lifestyle and you take yourself off of there. Because, you know, I watched those documentaries because I was curious about, you know, when people used to be porn, porn stars when they came off, you know, when they stopped doing it and tried to live a different life, how do it affect them and their kids, their family? Curious, just want to know. So if anybody know any women that live that type of lifestyle, tell them tell them to inbox me. Let, let's talk about it on, on the podcast. I like to hear their side. 
or how they see it. Anybody? Um, what was the other thing? Yeah, I didn't write anything down. It's all coming from memory. Uh, Oh, yeah, okay. Now, I was just thinking, you know, I'd just be, my mind just be going, and I was wondering why, um, if there was more women in politics that made laws and made rules, made rules policies, and different things, what would it be like? Because right now, Men do run the world. Men are running the world. You have women here and there that, you know, that's behind them, but men run the world. Who's who's the law who the lawmakers, who you know, they all been president. We finally you know, you finally get a a female vice president. Um the law the lawmakers. What would it be like to have more women in position with the rules of engagement change on wars and um, will we have as many wars? I'm talking about all around the country, just uh, all around the world, you know, that you had women in position. Would it be this many wars? The men of problems. Will we be able, will we be able to get along better? That was just one of those those thoughts. I, I you know I got to thinking, and uh, I was like, uh, the wars and the the destruction of everything is, is basically by man, the male gender. The male, the alpha. What would it be like to have women in, in those positions? I don't know if my mic close enough or it's going out, but let me move it around here. So, what y'all think? Will we, will we be better off? Or will we be still going to war? Fighting many wars and battles and having many situations. And you know, I, I and also let me let me give you another one of those things that uh that came to my thought is that uh if you think about it. Who created slavery? Man. A man created slavery. To put other human beings in a situation to do their bidding. And that what created Racism that followed down the line because I don't think, I mean, I don't know. Would it have been a such thing as racism come about if slavery never was, had never been? Would racism be a factor in that? Because I think once people got used to having somebody as a slave. Racism became. They start hating that they no longer had power over these people, over my ancestors, or in any other culture. Once man got people to work for them, and then to start loosening the rope and giving people freedom that people stayed in that frame of mind that these people 
are inferior to them. They made the people inferior to them. They made our people inferior to them. Because guess what? We was the last ones on the totem pole to have anything, to try to get your life on track. While everybody else was far in advance and in the front. So what they have been, and you you think about it, who created slavery? It was government, the people in power. If I'm not mistaken, you know, I could be wrong, but you know, this is what I'm thinking right now. The people in power, or those who made the laws, those who carried out the laws. They say, we want these people as slaves, and this is the law. So the government created racism. So that came out of slavery. Am I right or am I wrong? I don't know. I could be wrong, but that's just how I see it. So now, I don't know if they really want to change it. I mean, it, it, it's still, we, we still seeing effects from that era. You know, with the people that's in power, like say like the police, that they're able, a lot of them are able, even on camera, do something kill an unarmed black man or for that fact anybody on camera and will be able to get away with it with no problem but then when a regular person in that same situation it happens to them they go to prison You can't, a regular person like me can't say, he reached, he reached for his pants, I thought he was going for a gun. They ain't going to see it the same way. It's not justified when you do it. But it's cool when they do it. So those are the things that I see. Those are the things that I see that are culturally dysfunctional. Why Man. Why An- Another topic Okay yeah, That's the question now. Is why But another topic What y'all think is going to happen now if the U.S. shooting the balloon down that China said was a civilian, I don't know, research balloon or whatever, that the United States shot it in. Now, is China mad about it? What's going to happen? We already in an economical situation. Then with the United States now outsourced a lot of jobs and you know products and everything has come from China we already had this situation with uh, shipping and stuff like that you know where it's taking us months to get stuff could we be in another situation where that happens again and then it really puts us in, puts us in a recession because right now jobs are already beginning to lay off So what y'all think? Are we headed for some trouble times? Well, y'all let me know. This was a um, 
basically a freestyle podcast. I just wanted to, you know, talk about some things and, you know, hear what you say. I didn't have time. I didn't write down down nothing or go in, you know, go through, you know, you know the whole process. But tell me what y'all think. So until next time, I'm culturally dysfunctional. Take care of each other. Watch over each other. Be kind. Be courteous. Be friendly. And uh I'll see you next time. It's the big guy.